everyone in the room and everyone watching online. My name's Jenny, I am the current vice chair of the meetings. Let's start with um, some housekeeping. So for fire evacuation, we have nothing planned in terms of a fire drill. So if there is an alarm in any event, if you follow the staff and the green men out to the fire meeting point. Um, if anyone would like to use the toilet at any time, uh, don't feel the need to ask, just go ahead. There are toilets on this floor, um, which should be relatively easy to find. Uh, do we have any apologies for absence? No, we've not received any. No, no apologies for absence. Okay, uh, so there's a collaborate participants. So, yeah, that's yeah. Online. so that's everyone online. Uh, so please keep your microphones turned off until you're invited to speak and use the hand up function to attract the attention of the room. Please feel free to use the chat function to communicate with us or ask any questions you may have. If we have a vote, we'll be able to use the online voting feature to participate. Um, this is the staff student protocol, which will be explained by Liam, our president. Um, yeah, so the, the staff uh, student protocol basically means that uh, the staff uh, cannot be named or um, no, no one can sort of direct any, uh, any fire or any, any complaints or anything they do have to staff. If anyone does have a problem with anything, uh, please talk to myself or any of the other officers um, and then we can take that information back and talk to the staff. And do we have any declarations of conflict of interest at all? No. First, we've got make a change, which I'll be throwing over to the president. And I'm back. So, make a change. Um, I highlighted what make a change was uh, last uh, last time in the parliament. Uh, but just to highlight what uh, make a change is. Um, so basically, making a change is your opportunity as students uh, to make a change at the union and coincidentally or not, uh, possibly have an impact um, out on the university itself. So what is Make a Change? So Make a Change um, is a way to implement policies into FEDSSU's um, objectives. So if you wanted to put something in policy uh, that you wanted to get passed here, so for example, I usually, always use the one that if you wanted FEDSSU to push the university to get a swimming pool, it was always the one I used, but yeah, if you want the uh, bed issue um, to push to get a swimming pool, then you would put it in a policy, which we can help you write, bring it to Union Parliament, um, and from there we can vote on it. Um, if it does make it into policy, it will be in policy for two years, um, and in those two years that it's in policy, we have to actively push towards uh, getting these policies that we have in place, or the ideas that you have, and try to get them implemented. So it is a very good opportunity to leave a legacy if you are leaving us, but it's also a great opportunity uh, to change the way um, that you learn or change the way that life is happening at U of B. So it's very important that you do get them in place. So fire away, get them done, and if you ever need any help, please contact me, the exec team, or our staff. I have actually realised that I've forgotten something, so I would like to apologise for that. Um, I just need to make sure if everybody accepts the agenda. Okay. And we, uh, the previous meeting, we attempted to ratify the election of the chair and vice chair. It does not look like we've reached for a but I will double check that. No, we are not. No? So we'll have to save that for the next meeting. Uh, next we have uh, union updates. So, from the first one over to the VP of Policy. Uh, yeah, uh, hello. Um, so, I'm giving an update on the Liberation Networks currently. Uh, at this moment in time, we don't have any students that have created one. Uh, so, really, I'm pledging just to make clear that we really need these uh, liberation groups uh, re represented to its full extent. Meaning that the the things that come with the liberation networks, you would work closely with the union, making sure that you cover priority campaigns, and then you would chuck on events itself. And I would like as much support as possible for people that identify themselves with these characteristics within these uh, liberation networks to come forward and create one. 
for us moving forward. And you can do this by going to the Beds Issue website and under representation, it says the Liberation Networks of how to join if you identify yourself as one. Oh, and sorry, just a quick one as well. Uh, currently we've got the LGBT History Month celebrating. We've been going around with the flag to different campuses. And so we'll be at Bedford tomorrow and finishing at Luton. This is obviously to help uh, get the LGBT plus network up and running, help students identify what it could actually uh, entail itself. And we do also have a Pride Night. So please make sure that you look into coming along and getting involved. Do we have any questions in the room for EP equality? No? How about online? No. No? Okay. So we'll move on to the next update from BP Union Development. Hi, everyone. Um, so since our last meeting, we have awarded two bronze level awards from our accreditation. Um, that was to the Nepalese Society and to Sharesh Khan, who is a committee member of the Nepalese Society. Um, we also have multiple societies that are halfway to getting a bronze um, level accreditation. So we're really trying to push them to really like come to Union Parliament and check those boxes so that they can get accredited for it. So, yeah. I think that's Do we have any questions in the room for BP Union Development? No. And how about online? No. Okay. And we'll move on to the next update from BP Education. Yep, so just a little update on reps from me. So our rep numbers haven't changed since the last time because we're kind of past our electing period for <coughs> reps. Um, training is still ongoing. I've had a few training sessions this week and that's going really successfully. Um, we have moved rep elections to term three, ready for reps to be nominated for term one of the next academic year, just so they're secured and ready to start. And then we just have to nominate first year reps in September, October. Um, we also have reps working towards their accreditation as well. It has been slow to start for the academic reps, but I'm quite glad that some of them are getting there and they have nearly checked off the bronze, so that is looking good. And many of them then might have more reps accredited than societies, so let's see. Is there any questions in the room for BP education? Um, yeah, so we're, well, for Planet Science, um, we do have academic reps in place, so they weren't informed about the update to having it done online. Um, so We've emailed the Red Chess to email that had nothing back on that. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, so what I would. Could, oh, yeah, so the question was um, there are some reps in place in. I'm sorry, I can't remember what I've asked. Is it paramedic science? Yeah, paramedic science, but they were not officially elected through the online system because they weren't made aware of it. That is absolutely fine. You Did you email the overall Red SU email? Yeah. That's fine. Um, what I would suggest is to email be heard, so be dot heard, because that is directly to the people that are in charge of reps. Um, you can also email myself, and I can transfer the information. That's just Daisy Johnson. At, these are all at beds.ac.uk, and we'll get that fine. That's absolutely fine that that's happened because that has been a thing that has happened this year due to the changes. So we're hoping to iron those out. But if there is any other courses where people are reps but they're not officially elected online please just contact b.herd at beds.ac.uk and we'll get you officially put online and then you can get your training and maybe start working towards your accreditation as well. So that's fine. Any more questions before I step down? Any online? Beautiful. Okay, so next we will move on to union <coughs> Yes, it is. Union updates from the president. Um, so how are we doing? Um, so on the board here we are talking about part-time officers and campus liaison uh, officer updates. Um, after a restructure that we had at the union, 
um, and a lot of missing posts. Um, we have finally uh, collaborated our team together. We finally made the appointments that we need to make. Um, so um, we are finally getting back on track when it comes uh, in terms of uh, representation and people getting full inductions. Um, the reason why this is here and the reason why I'm telling you this is we felt that um, it would be unfair for people to come present what we've been doing where we haven't had the places to fulfill these. Um, so we are looking to establish this from Easter this year. So for our new officer team, everything will be spick and span. Uh, well, I'm here. This is another plug uh, about elections. So elections are closing on, when I say elections are closing, the nominations for elections are closing this Friday at noon. Uh, so even if you're remotely thinking about running, just put your, just put your, uh, your nomination in. It's so quick, easy to do. It takes two minutes. You just go nominate yourself now. Um, you just fill out your manifesto, which could be five points um, of what you hope to achieve while you're in post something that's affected you as a student, something you want to change. Um, and if you're really stuck and you really don't know what to do, we've got staff here uh, that can talk you through. They've been here a long time, so they can tell you what things might be good for you to say, what things might not be good. So like, we, we basically will work with you to make sure that your nominations will be the best they can be. Um, another plug that I want to do is we've got part-time officers. Um, and we've also got camps liaison officers, and we've also got NUS delegates. So for more information on this, please do go to our website, look at everything that we are putting on in terms of nominations, because where you're at university, you should take every opportunity you do have, uh, because these are some of the best years of your life. So just take everything that is out there um, and just go for it. Thank you. How are we doing guys? Uh, after last meeting, uh, I talked a lot about going into students' lectures uh, about the elections. Um, I'll continue to do that uh, over the next couple of weeks of when the nominations close on the 21st of February. So if you want to know more about the elections, come find me, go to our website, but make sure that you put yourself forward and become a leader. Currently, we have a new interim vice chancellor, uh, but we're currently in the process of recruiting a new vice chancellor. But as your president of the Student Unit, I've been in, invited onto the interview panel to make sure that we get the best vice chancellor for you, the students. As a constant effort to improve our partnership between the union and the university, uh, we're working on rewording and making the memorandum of understanding, which is the partnership we have with the university, to make it more readable and accessible for you, the students. Uh, that was my report. Um, it was three three key points that I've been working on. Um, it's obviously stuff that I've, as I've been working on, but from an update from last um, Union Parliament meeting, uh, this is what I've been working on. Um, so I would like to open the floor and online and then wherever you may be today for some questions. I won't bite. <laughs> uh, Daisy, yes. Um, so how many lecture shout outs have you done so far? Okay, uh, so just to repeat the question, uh, Daisy said, how many lecture shout-outs have I done? Um, to put a number on it exactly, I'm not too sure. Um, I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks, so if I had to put it a ballpark figure and guess, um, I'd say anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, lecture shout-outs I've been doing. Um, and I continue, will continue to do that uh, through Thursday and early morning Friday to try to secure any more nominations that we can do. Um, just an update on that, it's, it has been very positive. Uh, lecturers have welcomed me in um, and it's been very well received. Any other questions online? In the room? Any questions at all you want to ask me about anything? Do you have questions online? Or anything? Um, so there's a question about the elections. Yes. Um, uh, and the assumption that the rolls start in September. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what about people that maybe don't finish their course until January? Okay. Um, so the, the question was um, around elections. Um, and because the job technically starts on the 1st of July, um, was there any scope for people that start in September um, or s finish their course late in January? Um, so, is this, is it, so if I'm talking from 
um, other uh, exec officers. So people that have done masters in the past, uh, they've done the work alongside uh, the exec role. Um, but with this exec role itself, we are very flexible and in working around you and providing um, the work, the uh, services and everything that you need to support you in coming into the role when you need to come into it. Um, best thing I'd say is reach out to our team, uh, send me an email, send Bezos you an email, or come speak to us and our staff, and we'll be able to give you a, a more in detail and depth um, scenario and sit down. Ensure that you reach every faculty? Good question. So the question was, how do I ensure that I reach every faculty? Um, so I have spoke to um, every faculty, all four faculties, uh, business, health, sport, and education, um, and HSS, uh, CATS, and CATS, yes, of course, CATS. Um, yeah, so I spoke to all the um, executive deans um, of every faculty. I've also spoke to their associate deans um, who have all gave me permission to be in the lectures. Uh, two of the four faculties have actually given me timetables um, of their lectures for me to go into. Um, so I can say that I've, I've reached all the faculties or I've been to all the faculties, um, but I've been aiming mostly at going to lectures to capture the larger cohort of students and spread the message far and wide. Yes. Um, we've got one more call. We've got another question just coming through. Yes. Cool. One over there. Um, are the roles just for second years or can in first year do it? No, so um, the roles are open to absolutely anyone as long as you're a UOB student. Um, and I'd encourage anyone that is thinking about running just to do it. Um, not only, I'm going to, this is a bit of a plug, I'm going to tell you a little bit about all. Um, not only that there's multiple benefits. We are fun, we're flexible. Um, you're a company director as soon as you leave, um, well, as soon as you might be a student now, you could be graduating, uh, instantly be a company director. Um, not to mention that you get paid £19,125, oh, £250, whatever it is. Anyway, you're getting close to £20,000 for being a representative to all students. Um, and you have, so if, oh, again, if you are a first year, second year student, uh, you most will have to take a year out of your studies, um, but then this is why it's called a sabbatical role because you're taking that sort of like gap between years. Uh, but it is, from my prior experience, and I'm sure all other officers will say, uh, it's been a great experience. I've been here for two years now, um, and I've learned so much about myself. You get put into loads of different workshops, you learn to public speak. This job will set you up for life, and I'd encourage anyone, if you are thinking about it, just to do it. You've got nothing to lose and perhaps a lot to gain, so get your nominations in. Any other questions? Cool. Got one over back, yes? When do nominations close? So the question was when do nominations close? So nominations close on the 21st of February um, at noon. That's not, that's not 12 p.m. as in like deadline for your assignments. No, this is, this is noon, um, so please, um, if you are going to do it, if you are going to do it, try to do it Thursday evening at the latest. Just don't leave it to the last minute because one, if, it, if it's late, we can't accept it. So just get it nice and early, get it done, get it out of the way. And if you have any problems, do come speak to any of us and we will help. Cool. Yep. Amazing. Well, thank you. We have a presentation from Baby, who's our Vice President of Education. So since the last Union Parliament we had, I had my PAT working group that I discussed with you guys. It's apprehensive positivity that I'm feeling, but some really good stuff came out of it and it's now just got to take it to the committees of the university to get okay. So hopefully some good stuff will happen. So recently we had our academic rep steering group where an academic member of staff, quite high up, highlighted that some of her staff in her faculty are still struggling with the new system. So that has highlighted that we do need to do some more work about the understanding of the new rep system. So since the closure of our Life at Bed survey, we've been doing some really good initial analysis on some of the results that we got, and we got a really good response rate from LSE students, so we can start working towards making their student experience a bit more equitable.
listening. Anyone got any questions? It's fine if not. Okay. Everyone sure? That's cool. That's it. Yeah? Oh. Love it. Doing such a good job, Daisy. Yeah, no leading question. <laughs> We have a presentation from Reese, the Vice President of Policy. So in celebration of LGBTQ Plus Month, we'll be travelling around all our campuses with the new flag. Students can get involved by putting their hand on the flag itself or colouring in. So please make sure that you check out when we're coming to your campus. Research has begun into student prices for single tickets within our local bus services. I'm now in the process of seeing what partnerships the university have so then I know which avenue to go down to try and get that sorted for you. I will be making sure that all services that the university have to offer when it comes to the learning support for students are very much well communicated and that students are advised of where to go when it comes to it. So as you can see there are three updates uh, currently what's been going on uh, but I would just like to say on a note that uh, since the last Union Parliament I have struggled a little bit with a couple of family deaths, so I have uh, not been in the right frame of mind to be succeeding in all of my objectives and priorities currently. However, I am starting to feel a bit better uh, with the team's help. I'm starting to get many of these objectives back on the right track, so please do bear that in mind when asking questions about what I've been doing. So, is there any questions? Yes. Um, you talked about um, looking to travel or family travel benefits. Uh, where are you looking on that and what do you hope to achieve, I guess, by the end of the end of the year? Yep. Uh, for those that are uh, watching in live, the question was about uh, the travel. Uh, what do I hope to achieve and where I am at uh, currently with it? Uh, in answer to that, currently, because that was one of my main priorities to focus on in the last couple of weeks, I had hoped to have at least arranged a meeting with uh, uh, somebody from a local bus company, such as uh, Arriva and such. So that would have been really beneficial. Unfortunately, I didn't get round to it. So what I hope to achieve by the end of it, by the end of my time here, would be to at least implement a single bus ticket for either Arriva or Centre Bus. But for now, I'm going to break it down, get myself back into the right frame of mind and start working out ways in which I can achieve it rather than giving promises that might not happen. Yeah. Just for clarification on that point, when you say a single ticket, do you mean a single like student fare ticket? Absolutely, yes. It's all about student prices that I'm trying to look into, not just single fares in terms of adults or juniors and things. Mm -hmm. The main priority is to make sure that students can access the bus, especially if they're only coming one way and not needing a return ticket. So that's kind of one of the objectives I hope to achieve by the end of my tenure. Yes. Um, what can we expect to see at the yeah, uh, for those that were watching, the question was, what can we expect to see at the LGBT Pride Night? Um, you can expect to see the Dance Society turning up for a start. Uh, you will get uh, also the first 100 people that arrive will be getting some slushes drinks, which is always a good thing, of course. There'll be plenty of decorations and things going on within the night itself, as well as, I do believe, alcoholic slushes as well which will be nice, uh, so there's many things going on in celebration of it. Thank you. Up next we have a presentation by Amanda, who's our VP Union Development. So since our last meeting, we had the accreditation lunch evening. Um, where we introduced the accreditation scheme to our societies, society committee members, and academic reps. We also awarded two bronze awards to the Nepalese Society and to one of their committee members. We also had our refreshers fair, where we had four societies, including the Law Association and the LGBTQ Plus Society, showcase themselves and get some new members. We're also having our first international student focus groups, 
um, they're intended to get feedback from international students and we haven't had a lot of engagement in those but we're thinking of a new marketing strategy to get more students involved. trying to like uh, advertise it and try to get people involved isn't communicating like it's not reaching international students so from what David and I have like talked about we're thinking of talking to someone who to one of the members who uh, does workshops with the international students about like me coming in and talking to them when he's doing one of the workshops so that it's like direct communication and they can also ask me questions about what it is and stuff so I just feel like they just haven't been getting the information and they're just not engaging with it. So we're just going to try another route. Do you have any more questions? Online, perhaps? No? Sorry? Yes? I was just wondering, with the, um, for people online or at present that might want to know, what do you have to do to reach the bronze accreditation for the accreditation scheme? Um, so for everyone who's watching online, uh, Daisy asked, uh, what do you need to achieve to get a bronze medal for their accreditation? Um, you need to attend one union parliament. Uh, you need to have uh, attended your society training. Um, you need to have also um, completed one upskill session. I think those are the three things that you have to do. I'm not 100% sure, and I can double check and get back to you if that's not everything. Okay. Anything else? Any more questions? No? Okay, thank you. So, is there any other business that needs to be discussed? So I kind of highlighted it too earlier. I forgot the whole thing, a little piece at the end. Uh, but again, this is just one last push for the elections. Um, the only reason I'm pushing for it is just because I know how impactful this job can be. Yeah, I, I expected the slide to be, it's not there. Um, yeah, I expected this. Um, You're on the mic, please. Oh, it's on the line? Okay, cool. <laughs> Technology, like it. Um, but yeah, like. I've, I've grown so much as a person by doing it. Um, <coughs> I came into this role, all I, did, all I did at university, basically I played sports, um, did a lot of social activities with my friends and didn't really get involved in the SU. Now you don't really need to be involved in the SU to run in these elections. Uh, you've just got to be passionate about something, something that may have happened to you at university that you want to change. So for me as a sports person, uh, I didn't like the way sports was run. So I thought what better way to change sport than go do it myself or, you know, have the opportunity to do it. So the first role was VP Sport. We changed some of the stuff around sport and we changed lecture time so that people could play sport. Um, then I went on to be, uh, put myself forward as president because I felt that like I'd outgrown that role and I wanted to do something bigger um, and I had some other ideas. Um, so quite honestly, like I took that one, I took that one leap of faith, that one opportunity to run in the elections uh, and it is quite, it's, it is just that simple. You put yourself forward, you campaign for two weeks, um, and at the end of it, you could have a job that will change your life. And quite honestly, you could put so much stuff on your CV because of it, they will put you head, head and shoulders above any other graduate that you've worked alongside of. You take one year out to do a sabbatical year, um, and who knows where it will take you. I know that it's bolted to my CV, and I'm excited to see where that I go. Um, so just take this opportunity, um, and all opportunities at university, and just make the most of it. I think the final point of business is to discuss the date and time of our next meeting. So these are the current proposed dates and details. Is the time still good for everybody? Mm -hmm. So the next date 
so we were planning to meet at the 9th of March with everybody being due that date. Okay, and I think that's the end of our meeting. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time.